Hello, and today I am going to focus on screening and the more technical uses of the combat phase, focusing on the piling and reach of weapons. Rather than just piling in forward to our enemy to fight, we are going to see if there are ways to get any more damage in, or perhaps to use that damage to hit more valuable targets nearby. We will then look at protecting our more valuable damage dealing units whilst still getting the opportunity to strike. Firstly, we are going to look at picking off support heroes, or similarly to one of the examples in my previous video, you could use this attack to attack a high threat enemy unit from outside of its combat range. So let's get to the table and see this in action. Often, we will find that armies are supported by more fragile support heroes that act as force multipliers for the army. And a great way to deal with this, you often say, is just shoot the heroes. However, when we don't have access to that, for example, playing Iron Jaws, we can also use the reach of our weapons to sometimes attack those heroes from over the top of the unit they're supporting, or to pile in and reach them this way. In this example, we have two enemy support heroes making the main unit significantly more powerful. For simplicity, to show two different situations, I have put one hero, a room master, in the middle of a larger squad, as you can see by his flaming staff. And another, off to the side of the squad, but within buff range to represent how we often see floating heroes nearby who provide support to those key units. In this case, he is a battlesmith with a silver and gold banner. Of note here, our models, except for the squad leader, have a 2 inch reach, and the enemy units are on 32mm bases. This means that unless the heroes are a significant distance behind the front line, there is usually a way to reach them. So let's be greedy. Let's make some charges to see if we can get to those heroes. And before we let the Maw Crusher on the right have his way with the unbuffed unit, we'll pile in an attack, kill those heroes, and hopefully leave a nice juicy target. Here is the result of the charge. In this case, we didn't get far enough to go for the full wraparound on the battlesmith on the left, however we did manage to get three of our brutes with a 2 inch reach into the front line and in range of the room master in the middle. Whilst not ideal, it certainly gives us a good chance to kill him when we pile in and assign their attacks to him. More interestingly, on the left, we have the opportunity to pile in and get maybe 4 or 5 brutes within combat range by getting closer to the large unit, but only marginally, as we will use the majority of the piling to go towards the battlesmith. Let's see what that looks like after the piling. This is the result of the piling. As you can see, we have moved the models closer to the closest models. However, by using the majority of the move towards that battlesmith, we have the opportunity to put some real hurt on him. In this case, we managed to get 5 brutes within reach, and this has the chance to kill him outright, which is excellent because that means we will remove his buff from the large unit before the Maw Crusher attacks, and that will mean that when the Maw Crusher attacks, it will be able to do a significant amount more damage. In our next example, we are going to look at combining these lessons with the use of a screen to let us protect our key units. Sometimes we know that an enemy unit has the power to wipe out our hammer. How do we get around this? Well, one method is to control how we trade units and move it in our favour. This is sometimes referred to as screening or using a meat shield. In the following example, we are the Ogre Moor Tribes player. We have a squad of 20 Noblars, which are conveniently halflings here, backed up by a squad of Iron Guts. Our opponent is using half guard berserkers, and in this case we will assume they are able to fight first, but not able to fight twice. We are going to show ways of both offensive and defensive screening. Since the defensive method is easier to set up, we will begin there. Defensive screening is all about positioning in our turn before the enemy gets a chance to move. 
here we can see that we have created a wall with our knoblars with our iron guts just under two and a half inches behind the front line. This allows us to be pulled into combat by the enemy when they engage us. However, it also means that half guard berserkers, having only a two inch reach, will not be able to attack our iron guts in the process. Moving to the fire slayer's turn, after his charge, we have ended up here. As mentioned, they can now pile in and attack our noblar screen. Whilst they will be able to obliterate the poor meat shield, this will then leave them open to a counter punch from our iron guts. Note, this can be done with units that have a small reach as well. You just need to make sure your opponent fights before you into your screen before you then nominate to pile in an attack. Here, we have jumped to the ogre player's turn to pile in an attack. I have left the noblar screen in place for reference just so that we can see where they were. However, the fire slayers will have piled in and attacked first, killing the entire screen. In this case, the iron guts from the ogres have been able to pile in and get all weapons within 3 inches, so therefore they are able to attack the half guard berserkers with no risk. Now let's look at how we use this screening strategy but on the offence instead. After all, your opponent will not always have to come to you, so sometimes you've got to take the game to them. Using our screen offensively does confer an element of risk. Specifically, unless our opponent is foolish enough to pile into combat and pull the iron guts in when they weren't previously in combat, we are going to need to make a charge, and therefore at least one model from the unit of iron guts will need to be within reach of the enemy. The priority here is going to be to screen the majority of the enemy unit's pile in ability and their combat reach with our noblar. Aiming to pin the models whilst leaving just enough space to allow that single iron gut to make a valid charge and thus minimise total exposure. Let's move to after the charge to see this in person. As you can see, on the charge we have moved the noblars up and to the flank, pushing onto the front facing side of the enemy unit. We have then charged with the iron guts and got a single model within half an inch, thereby making a valid charge. By choosing the corner of the enemy unit, we have minimised the amount they can get into our more precious iron guts. In this case, they will get a single model swinging at the iron guts if they so choose. Perhaps killing a single iron gut in exchange, but we will get the opportunity to bring our full power to bear upon the half guard berserkers. Should your hammer unit not have the reach to attack over your screen without being in threat of the enemy, we would actually nominate our screen to attack first, and that would mean the enemy would then go with their block of berserkers, leaving them to the counterpunch of our main damage when the screen has already taken the hit. Next, we will look at what to do when the enemy presents a small frontage. This can often make it hard to get all your models into combat at once, and to do this, we will do a nice wide charge with a focus on the pylon. In this short example, I'm just going to quickly cover the idea of charging in a wide spread out pattern to allow us to envelop our enemies to ensure we get the most possible damage output from our unit. Here, on our charge, we have moved from a cluster to a line with some extra bodies in the middle and on each side. When we do this, we will be able to pile in whilst maintaining unit coherency and take full advantage of the full frontage presented by our opponent, including their sides. So let's move to the pylon and see what that looks like. This is what it looks like after the pylon. Of note, I would like to draw your eye to the sides of the enemy unit. Here we expanded our line as we piled in to get those last couple of models into reach of the enemy. But what if instead we needed to pile in defensively to protect our units when the enemy catches a unit that has become exposed by a long bomb charge? So let's move to a defensive piling technique. This idea is brought to us by an opponent from a tournament setting, who took me completely by surprise when I thought I had pulled off a genius combat charge that would allow me to threaten and possibly kill one of their precious units. I am going to call this a defensive piling, and you will see it has some similarities to our early screening strategy 
In it, we are assuming that we either get to fight first, or the enemy player must first nominate a unit to pile in and attack elsewhere. Perhaps if they are trying to take out one of our other key threats without losing their own. In this situation, assuming we don't have an extraordinary reach, we can forego our attack and pile in closer, but tuck in behind our nearby friendly unit. This will mean that the enemy would need to wrap around that unit in front to hit our exposed unit, often making it impossible to secure enough damage to do the job. Alternatively, we could have the following situation, where if an enemy player is using cavalry to hit the side of our unit, we can actually rotate around their unit on the pylon and crash at least two models into it to pin it which would allow us to reduce the number of models that can get into combat due to the oval shape of cavalry bases. Originally, it looked like all gore grunters would be able to at least get their gore hackers in range. However, let's do a defensive pile in and see the result. As you can see, we have moved closer to the closest model, which was the second model for most of the Nobbars. However, we have created a very large amount of space by moving way from the side of the rest of the unit the Iron Jaws was coming from. Now, we will move to the Iron Jaws pile in to see how they counter this. Wow, what a difference that makes! We only got three Gore Grunters in, and even then, one of those has to use its Gore Hacker only. Is this even enough to kill the Noblar screen now? Maybe but it is significantly less likely, and it may even come down to battle shock. I bet that Iron Jaws player is kicking himself now, having not even killed the screen with six mighty Gore Grunters. I hope this video has given you some useful ideas to put into your games and help you tip the balance in your favour. Maybe we could combine the combat-based tactics from this video with my objective stealing from the prior video to even do both. What are some of the shenanigans you think can help win games? Let me know in the comments below, and thanks for watching.